Kyle Meredith here and joined in the studio by Dylan LeBlanc and his band, Kimmy and Caleb. They're, uh, they're helping him out today. Hi, how's it going? It's going good. How are you doing? Uh, it's great to see you, man. It's okay. good, good to have you in the studio here. Uh, Dylan LeBlanc playing tonight at the, uh, the New Vintage, right? Playing at the New Vintage. Yes. Um, have you been to town? I should ask you that. Uh, I've played here a few times. Played at Zanzibar. Yeah. Uh, that's usually that's actually the only place I've ever played here. Yeah. Well, I've you're just right down the street from uh, Zanzibar. New yeah. Ventures are like neighbors and everything. So it's good to have you back in town. It's great to be here. And uh, I know you're touring behind this new record, Cautionary Tell, which is, which is a beautiful record. Wow, thank you. Just a beautiful record all the way through. I, I've been reading some stuff about you know how you put it together. You get you know. You took some of your friends, and it uh, seems like at least half of Alabama Shakes is on the record. <laughs> and uh, and John Paul White from yes. the Civil War. He produced her, right? Yes. Yeah. What, was that just your friends, and you said, yeah, I'm going to grab my friends to do this? Or, or, or did they have something that you were looking for for this record? What was that? It was both. I mean, I, I wanted uh, John Paul's expertise, you know, like with his minimalistic uh, recording technique and how he knows how to shape a song. Uh, sort of uh, in the recording process. And Ben, I, I really love the way he really paints the tone that you want. Like, I can say I want this rhythm section to sound very, you know, like I want it to sound like 70s, you know, like with a tight drum sound and a real, like, uh, kind of uh, uh, flattened out bass tone. Mm-hmm. And, you know, so he's really good at that. So them two together, they work so well at uh, their, you know, uh, you know, form mm-hmm. just is, is, is amazing. Good form. Yeah, good, <laughs> good form. form. Good form, guys. That's yeah. what, what it needs to be in the liner notes. Form by. Yeah. Uh, I, I was kind of looking at some, uh, maybe one, and, and I might be kind of stretching it here, a parallel between you and, and John Paul White, because you stepped away from music, you, you you know, for a brief time, but it looks, you know, from what I've read, like you had to back off and kind of sure. find yourself again within the music, which is something that I feel like he's done in in. A different way, but he's kind of pulled that off too. Like you guys have that, you know. Yes. Kind of leaving the civil wars just to be behind the scenes again. Yeah, I mean, John is a is a is a music lover, and uh, he's a he's a fan of music as well as a, a talented artist himself. And uh, whatever, and I, John's a you know he's a very personal cat, and I don't pry into his mm-hmm. personal life. But whatever his reasons for doing whatever he's doing, you know, it's. It's obviously something that you know was healthy for him, mm-hmm. and that needed to happen. Which is the same with me. Mm-hmm. Uh, it was something that needed to happen. It was it's for my health. Yeah, you know, um, the obsession, you know, of of being out on the road and, and music, uh, you know, and and the and the and the obsession of you know tr- making it. It's all that's all like <laughs> that's hogwash. Yeah. you know, you gotta. You gotta enjoy it because you love to do it, you know. Yeah. And there's something that happens when you get worked and you get you're out there by yourself and alone, and you know it's it's rough. It's uh, it's people think it's like fun all the time, and that's just not the way it is. Yeah. If for you, was it about you know going away because you had to find something new, or was it going away so you could fall in love with whatever it is again? I think more than anything, uh, my mind got fragmented from the hustle on the road and the uh and like i was saying earlier i was out there by myself a lot mm-hmm. and that 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 was no fun you know it was just hard to make the drives and and there wasn't a lot of financial support there mm-hmm. you know uh it was it was hard when know? every day is worrying instead of yeah as you, say, having and, and, fun. And, you, know, you get into that sort of mind frame and you bring it home with you yeah and you know i couldn't differentiate the true from the false anymore that's a scary feeling yeah you know, and, and my behavior would remain the same when I would get home, and I couldn't, uh, I couldn't live like that anymore. Yeah, that I, sounds like really, a uh, really bad time. But I'm kind of happy that it resulted in a really good record. Thanks, man. <laughs> I don't know if that's what it took to make this record, but you know, whatever it took, because it is a beautiful record. Well, thank you. Let, let's let's hear some music. We'll talk some more in in, in just a minute. But you got your band here, uh, Dylan LeBlanc, again playing tonight at the New Vintage. And uh, what what shall we hear? Uh, let's do Cautionary Tale. All right, title track. Yeah. All right, on FPK. All right. Said with my heart and 
Dylan LeBlanc with the title track to his uh, new record, Cautionary Tale, here on 91.9 WFPK Radio Louisville. Playing tonight at the new Vintage. Thank you all for that one right there. Oh, thank you. Yeah. It was great. I, I know as the story goes, you know, for the backstory for anyone who's just getting uh, acquainted with you, you kind of grew up a little bit all over the place, right? Yeah. Back and forth. Yeah. I know Shreveport was in there, and mm-hmm. it seemed like, was there a California spot in there? Somewhere? Oh, no, no, no. No, I get that one mixed up. But I, I, I'm sure Muscle Shoals is the one that comes up the most. Yeah, people always want to talk about that, yeah. which I'm f- happy to do. I mean, it's a romantic place. I don't know if it is living there. It's probably, you know, just like anywhere else, but for yeah, everyone it is. else, it you is know, outside like, of it. It's like anywhere else. <laughs> But I guess that's uh that is kind of the romance of all the stuff that's that's coming to that spot. Does that did you figure that that really did help you or does that add pressure cuz I know the scene down there when you're a musician you have to be you got to have be your good. jobs. Yeah. Yeah, I mean that's the difference between that town and and like other towns like it's a small town, mm-hmm. you know, uh but you don't want to be a you know, uh you you wouldn't want to be a bad songwriter and go out and play bad songs. Yeah. Cuz you know you get eaten alive. <laughs> <laughs> and it's I wouldn't, you know. Yeah. I mean, I hope I hope my songs are good enough. I don't know. Yeah. Well, how did that work for you then? Because you know you're around that area and you're trying to become, you know, an artist in, in whatever way. Like, were you comfortable right away playing this in front of those seasoned musicians? And uh... I'm always nervous and in telling this to people, <laughs> especially you know like John Paul. Like he, that was the nature of the way we started the process was i would write a song and i'd email it to him yeah and we would email email back and forth and uh and you know he would give me feedback on the songs and when i finally got about 14 or 15 that i was comfortable with we started the process yeah. of uh, recording but it was very nerve-wracking <laughs> yes yeah. <laughs> just kind of putting yourself out there like that and it's a very personal record i mean these lyrics uh there's some beautiful uh, one song that i i kind of uh uh, really looked in on uh, Beyond the Veil. Yeah. And just lyrically, that, that's that's a beautiful song oh, thanks, uh, man. Uh, on the record. So, I mean, you do kind of really lay yourself out there raw when you're in a, a situation like this. Yeah. I mean, the record it's, is, is about, you know, basically it's like raising awareness to be become more self-aware. And I was going through like one of those transformations where I just was in a, wanted to be in a heightened state of self-awareness and sort of looking inward and not looking outward for answers because there is no answers, you know, and getting comfortable with that fact and to just sort of find a place where we could just be. But in the meantime, also like sort of explain in my own words, like the unconsciousness of everything and why I ended up the way I had become, which was just basically a nervous piece of matter running around on planet Earth, you know. It's an interesting way to put that. Yeah. 
Yeah. And that's what everybody is. Everybody's a nervous piece of matter running around. That's, that's, or, that's very true. You know? Did you get any advice? Like I saw there's you've got quite a list of folks that you've at least opened up for, played with, like uh, Lucinda Williams. And uh, did I see Springsteen was on there? Is that, is that yeah, right? Yeah, I did one show. With one show. But yeah. you get to count that. That counts. It does, yeah. I, 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 but I think people blow it out of proportion yeah. just a little bit. But it was it was the hard rock calling uh-huh. over in, in the UK, which was really fun. Like, have you ever had a chance to, like, you know, go to the these these great artists and 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 look for the advice on. I didn't meet you know, Springsteen. I had the opportunity to shake his hand and talk to him, and just in case on the off chance he was having a bad day, and <laughs> he would be like rude to me or something. Yeah. Like, you I don't want, want to destroy ruin. that myth. Yeah, I just yeah. didn't want to destroy the image. And a lot of artists I like, I I don't. Sometimes I just don't even want to meet them. Right. You know? Right. Just because you know everybody has days, you know. But I just want to, I just want to hear their music, you know, and keep the mystery alive. That's one of the. That's one of the best parts about, you know, artists is the mystery behind them, you know. One of the most exciting things. That's what we don't get anymore. We're, mm-hmm. like, bombed with social media. We know what they eat, what they what they do. And I kind of miss the days when, like, you didn't know much about them. Right. You just listened to their music, and it was like this, whoa, like, what's that dude thinking right now, you know? I completely agree with this. I, I think I've had this conversation a lot of times with other artists about... You know, like, it's hard to, you know, it's hard to compare because you don't really know. But, you know, Robert Plant is Robert Plant because yeah. of that mystery. Bowie had the mystery and everything. And, and would they have had the same impact if they'd, uh, you know, come out today right. with something like that? I know? don't know. I think if social media was in the 60s, you know, it would obviously streaming would be around as well. So it would just, I don't know. Everything is just different now. You yeah. know, you have to do social media just because it's something that's necessary, you know, and to get people interested because that's what's popular right now. Right. In the age of information. Well, I'll let the rest of you stay mysterious to me (laughs) and all of us. And we'll jump back into the music here. It's Dylan LeBlanc tonight at the new Vintage. You can get the details at WFPK.org. Can we hear another song? Yes, absolutely. All right, what do you got? Uh, Dude, look how far we've come. All right, it's at PK. Oh, that 
Dylan LeBlanc. From his uh, new record, Cautionary Tale, here on 91.9 WFPK again, uh, playing tonight at the new Vintage. The details are at WFPK.org. Thank you all for stopping in today. Thanks for having us. Uh, that was really great, and hopefully we'll see you back in town uh, yes, before too long. But we'll see you tonight at the new Vintage. Yes.